Ukraine's ousted president says he'll keep fighting for his country's future, but will not ask Russia for help. Viktor Yanukovych emerged this morning in Russia for his first public appearance since leaving his country. Dozens of Russian Marines are reported to be outside a Coast Guard base in the Crimean city of Sevastopol. But one top official now says Ukraine still controls the two largest airports in the region. Margaret Brennan is at the State Department, where officials are issuing a warning, especially to Russia, to not create a conflict. Margaret, good morning. Secretary Kerry is speaking to the press this morning, and he's going to try to calm these fast-moving events on the ground. While Viktor Yanukovych claims he's still the legitimate president, the White House is already working with a new prime minister who needs to quickly unite a divided Ukraine. With Russian warplanes on high alert along the Ukrainian border, Secretary Kerry urged restraint Thursday. We believe that everybody now needs to step back and avoid any kind of uh, provocations. He stressed that Ukraine alone should decide its fate. It's not our choice. It's not Russia's choice. It's the choice of the people of Ukraine. But like Russia, the U.S. is involved behind the scenes, pushing the transitional government to include all political parties in the hope of averting a civil war. And it plans to offer Ukraine a $1 billion loan to prop up its failing economy. When the crisis began last fall, U.S. diplomats threw their support behind the peaceful protesters, even feeding some of them in Maidan Square. A cautious President Obama stopped short of publicly embracing this Ukrainian revolution, something his predecessor did during the last one 10 years ago. Then President Bush hailed the so-called Orange Revolution as a budding democracy when it swept yet another Russian-backed government from power. It was short-lived and replaced by the pro-Russian Viktor Yanukovych. Charles Kupchin advised President Clinton on Russia policy. He said this administration sees the world differently. President Obama ran for re-election on a Porton bumper sticker that was, it's time for nation building at home. And that's why I don't think that he is chafing at the bit to jump into this. A high-ranking U.S. diplomat will head to Kiev soon and will consult with Europeans and the IMF to try to quickly stabilize this very young government.